the digestive system part 1 the digestive system consists of the digestive tract called alimentary canal which forms a continuous passage from the mouth to the anus the food is taken in the mouth and sent downwards as the food moves downwards into the alimentary canal it comes in contact with a series of juices called digestive juices which contain various enzymes in the digestive tract the food is broken down so that the carbohydrates fats proteins minerals vitamins can be absorbed in the blood stream The unabsorbed food remnants are passed out from the alimentary canal by a process called egestion. Though the digestive system has basic similarities in structure and functions, it differs widely in different animals. Let us discuss the digestive system of mammals. Let's take an example of the human digestive system. The digestive system of mammals consists of an alimentary canal and associated glands. The alimentary canal is a long tube about 8 to 10 meters in length and of varying diameter, while the associated glands are the glands that secrete digestive juices for the digestion of food. The alimentary canal includes mouth and buccal cavity. esophagus stomach small intestine and large intestine the mouth is a transfer slit like aperture bounded by two soft movable lips inside the buccal cavity there is a muscular tongue and teeth arranged on two jaws Tongue is a thick musculosensory organ present on the floor of the buccal cavity. The posterior part of the tongue is attached to the floor of the buccal cavity by a soft ligamentous fold called frenulum. The surface of the tongue is covered by a mucous membrane lined by stratified squamous epithelium. The upper and lateral surfaces of the tongue remain covered with various types of papillae. Filiform papillae are conical projections distributed in parallel rows over the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. They are whitish and contain no taste buds. Fungiform papillae are mushroom-like elevations. distributed among the filiform papillae and are more numerous near the tip of the tongue most of them contain taste buds valid papillae are arranged in the form of an inverted v on the posterior surface of the tongue and all of them contain taste buds taste buds are present on the posterior lateral part of the tongue A taste bud is a pyriform structure made up of modified epithelial cells. It has a small cavity that opens to the surface through a gustatory pore. The taste buds in different parts of the tongue respond to particular modalities of taste: sweet, sour, salty or bitter. The tongue helps in ingestion, chewing and swallowing of food. It also helps in cleaning of teeth, mixing of food and saliva, speech, etc. An adult human being has 16 teeth on each jaw. As these teeth are embedded in jaw sockets, they are also termed as thecodont. A set of teeth appear twice in an adult. The first set of teeth are called milk teeth, which are later replaced in the adults by a set of permanent teeth which last for years. 
Thus teeth are also termed as diphyodont. Teeth are of four different types. They differ in their structure as well as functions. Thus they are also called as heterodont. In an adult human being, the dental formula is 2123. That is, in each half of the jaw, from middle to backwards, there are two incisors, one canine, two premolars and three molars. Incisors are chisel shaped with sharp cutting edges. Canines are dagger shaped and pierce the food. Premolars and molars are broad, strong crushing teeth. Although the shape of different teeth varies, all have a similar basic structure. In general, a tooth consists of an upper exposed part, the crown, and one or more roots which are embedded in sockets in the jawbone. The junction of crown and root is known as the neck. The greater part of tooth is formed by a bony-like material called dentin. In the region of the crown, the dentin is covered by a much harder white material known as enamel. The dentin is also covered by a thin layer of cement over the root. The cement is united to the wall of the bony socket in the jaw by a layer of fibrous tissue called the periodontal ligament. There is a pulp cavity within the dentin which contains a mass of cells, blood vessels and nerves. The primary function of teeth is to grasp and hold the food in the mouth cavity. They are also modified to serve as a grinding mill for chewing the food. With the help of the teeth, tongue and jaw movements, food is chewed and mixed with saliva in the mouth. The mouth leads to a funnel-shaped pharynx which continues into a long muscular tube, esophagus. The esophagus is a 22 to 25 centimeter long, narrow, muscular tubular structure. It runs downward through the neck behind the trachea and opens in the stomach in the abdomen. The swallowed food is propelled towards the stomach through the esophagus by the movements of its muscular wall. These movements are called peristalsis. The stomach is a large muscular and somewhat J-shaped sac. It occupies the left side of the upper part of the abdominal cavity. The upper part of the stomach is called the cardiac or fundus. The middle dome shaped part is the body and the distal part is called the pyloric or antrum. The stomach thus has two ends. The cardiac end where it receives esophagus and the pyloric end where it opens into the duodenum. The stomach has two curvatures, the greater curvature at the left and the lesser curvature at the right side. The mucous membrane of the stomach is thick and it is thrown into numerous longitudinal folds called rugi when stomach is empty. In distended stomach, these folds are not seen. There are numerous glands that exist in the stomach which are called gastric glands. The muscles on the stomach wall churn and mix the food with the gastric juice. They also help in propelling the food to the small intestine through the pyloric end. Small intestine is the longest part of the alimentary canal, about 6 meters in length. 
It is narrow, tubular, and occupies the central and lower part of the abdominal cavity. It is divided into three regions, namely duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. It looks somewhat like the alphabet C. The ducts conveying pancreatic juice as well as the duct carrying bile open in the duodenum. The duodenum opens into the jejunum which is about 2.5 meters long. The ileum is the longest part of the small intestine and it opens in the cecum, in the lower part of the abdominal cavity. Both ileum and jejunum are highly coiled structures. Inner mucosa of small intestine is raised into millions of minute finger-like projections called villi. A villus is about 0.5 to 1 millimeter long. Its free surfaces have numerous electron microscopic evaginations called microvilli. They form a brush border. Both villi and microvilli increase the surface area for digestion and absorption of food. All the three parts of the small intestine have tube-like glands in their walls. These glands secrete intestinal juice into the intestinal lumen. The muscles on the intestinal wall churn, knead and crush the food, mix it with intestinal juices and propel it towards the large intestine by contractions. The digested products are mostly absorbed by the small intestine. The ileum opens into the large intestine which is much shorter and wider than the small intestine. It does not possess villi or brush bordered cells. It is distinguished into three regions, namely cecum, colon and rectum. Cecum is a small pouch-like structure which ends into a tubular part called vermiform appendix. Both cecum and vermiform appendix are vestigial in function and are not involved in digestion. Colon is a long sacculated structure which is differentiated into ascending colon extending up to the liver on the right side transverse colon which crosses the abdominal cavity below the pancreas descending colon running downward on the left side and the pelvic colon which is s-shaped and continues into the rectum rectum is slightly dilated and about 13 centimeters long it opens outside by anus and is guarded by two anal sphincter muscles. The larger intestine does not secrete enzymes and plays only a minor role in the absorption of nutrients. It stores unabsorbed food remnants temporarily and also concentrates the contents of absorbing water to form feces. The movements of colon help to void feces through anus.